assume you're similar to me, that um, I hate confession. Right? I, I don't like to acknowledge my weaknesses, my frailties. I don't like it at all. I know that I need to. I do it. Uh, but it's not exactly the most fun part of a faith journey, right, to confess. Um, and yet, I know that when I do it, man, it, there's like this liberation, right? There's this freedom that comes. There's this, this overwhelming sense that, that that's good that I can unload this from myself. Um, and, and I want to read a story because I was trying to figure out, so um, what's a good biblical story about that? And one of my favorites uh, with regard to this is King David, right? King David is a great guy man after God's own heart, a desire for who God is and what God does, but David is also the one who kind of has his way with Bathsheba, and kills his, her, wife, her husband, uh, uh, Uriah, and, um, you know, he feels like he's covered his tracks and he's done everything right to make sure he doesn't uh, get caught in all of this. Uh, and then we see in 2 Samuel chapter 12, um, uh, this conversation that David has with uh, the priest, prophet Nathan, so the Lord sent Nathan to David. He came to him and said to him, There were two men in a certain city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing but one little ewe lamb, which he had bought. He brought it up, and it grew up with him and with his children. It used to eat of his meager fare and drink from his cup and lie in his bosom, and it was like a daughter to him. Now there came a traveler to the rich man, and he was loath to take one of his own flock or herd to prepare for the wayfarer who had come to him. But he took the poor man's lamb and prepared that for the guest who had come to him. Then David's anger was greatly kindled against that man. He said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this deserves to die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. And then Nathan said to David, you're the man. You're the one who did this to Uriah. Well, that's kind of shocking, isn't it? This comeuppance that sort of helps point out that we've all got shortcomings. <laughs> and that no matter how much we're a person after God's own heart, or no matter how much we want to be faithful, or no matter how much we try to be faithful, we've all got comeuppance, right? And we all have shortcomings that we need to sort of own. It's at this point we're told that in Scripture that David wrote Psalm 51. When you turn to Psalm 51 in the Scripture, it says... A psalm of David when the prophet Nathan came to him and after he had gone into Bathsheba. And that's the introduction to Psalm 51. And in part, here's what uh, Psalm 51 says. David writing it after Nathan calls him out. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. He goes on to say uh, in verses 7 and following, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out my iniquities. Isn't that sometimes how we feel? Hide, hide yourself, God. I don't want you to know, God. I wish you weren't here, God. I wish this wasn't going on, God, right? That becomes sort of our shame is that we want to hide from God and we want to extract ourselves from uh, whatever God's doing. And then he finally goes on to say this, For you have no delight in sacrifice, the form of worship. You've got no real delight in that, David says. If I were to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. The sacrifice acceptable to God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. broken and contrite heart you will not despise. I think a part of that is this whole sense in which God really yearns for us to own our dilemma, to confess whatever that is, uh, and to lay it out before God. Not for God's sake, right? I mean, um, confession's not about God, really, right? God doesn't need to hear this. God kind of already knows this stuff. God kind of recognizes this is who we are, right? So the confession's not for God, right? The confession is for us. 
and our deep need to recognize our weakness and our dependence upon God. About uh, six years ago or so, um, I had an encounter with Josiah, my son, that I was uh, uh, that I remained deeply ashamed about. Uh, you know, I was pretty good, and unfortunately, probably still am pretty good at pointing fingers at people who abuse their children, because it's clearly not a right thing to do, right? And I remember when Josiah was 16, um, I'd had about enough of his um, attitude, his behavior, his um, comings and goings, and in fact, we had just kind of come back from um, some of my sabbatical in which we had some very bad encounters uh, overseas uh, uh, the family, and one day in the kitchen, uh, Josiah and I are having a, a knockdown, drag out conversation uh, about things that I didn't approve of, didn't want him to do, didn't think were right, and uh, you know, in the heat of that conversation, Josiah kind of put his hand out into my chest and pushed me back, and I just lost it. those things that you point out at others. I leapt out at him. We got into a knockdown, drag out fight right there in the kitchen. this better. <laughs> I can still hear. I can still hear Kay screaming. took Josiah to the ground. I was not hitting him, but I was um, controlling him and dominating him, and <clears throat> I held him down long enough until it was clear that he could not do anything more, that he was, you know, he couldn't move anymore, he couldn't hit me anymore, we couldn't um, have any more struggle. And then I, I let him up and he went to his room. And um, I just remember deep shame. I just remember, how, how did I get here? How did, how did this happen? Why are we doing this? How, how can you do this to your own child? And so I had a, what I call a David moment, right? I had this whole sense of, um, why, God? Why, why am I doing this to my own kid? And why have we found ourselves in this point? And... and um, So I went to Josiah's room, opened the door, because of course he'd closed the door. And, uh, he was just laying on his bed, and um, I just said, Josiah, I am so sorry. I cannot fathom what I've just done. I, 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 I can't even believe that I've done this. I am so sorry. Uh, it's the first time I ever sort of realized in a, in a real sense what confession was like, right? What um, I'd confessed to God before. I'd you know, had these conversations with God before, but there was this real sense in which um, it was clear without a shadow of a doubt that what I'd done was wrong, that, that it was an abomination 
to God, to my kid, to my family, to me. And that I needed to make amends. So we spent the next few minutes just kind of conversing about that. And it, it did not take long because I didn't want to be there. He didn't want to be there. Um, but it was important to me that I confess my sin to my kid, that I apologize to him for what I had done, uh, and that I made a promise never to do that again. Um, confession is important. Sometimes it's the small stuff, right? Sometimes it's the, man, I was a real jerk and I shouldn't do that. And sometimes it's a, I missed that opportunity, right, to connect with somebody or whatever. But sometimes it's, and I am royally messed up, and I need to change who I am, and I need to make amends because of that. Um, it has changed the way I interface with my kids, and I hope that it's changed the way that I interface with people. But I don't. I, I need that reminding every once in a while. I need to be reminded that um, confession, as they say, is good for the soul. I want to encourage you to consider who is it that you need to confess to. Again, it may be something really minimal. It may be uh, that you've just kind of hurt somebody or offended somebody in a simple, small way. Or it may be that there's a relationship that's broken in your family, maybe here, uh, maybe with some other person you know well, a good friend. Um, I want to challenge us to consider who we need to confess to. And then also consider how God's amazing reckless grace will provide a way to make life more full and whole. Because while those challenges still exist with my son Josiah, they are nowhere near the same. And... Um, we are able to have conversations that are challenging, um, but never again will there be a takedown, knockdown encounter. Um, I hope that we'll find those ways to do that. I wonder if you might pray with me. God, thank you that in the midst of life when things happen that clearly we did never intend or never imagined or certainly didn't even want that you are with us and for us thank you that when we make royal screw ups challenge ourselves in ways that um, kind of um, make us realize that we've just messed up Thank you that your amazing, reckless grace envelops us and helps us to keep moving forward, to not getting bogged down, to recognizing that even in the midst of our guilt and perhaps even our shame, that you are really there for us. Help us, God, to never forget that and to always claim the gift of what confession can do, how it can cleanse our heart and souls, and how it can make a huge difference in who we are. Now this is our prayer, and we ask it in the name of Jesus, who offered that great confession for us and before us, and helps us even this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you for your